so uh, the first team is CrowdSpace, which is from both Russia and the United States. And we'll start the clock as soon as I get to my chair. Uh, thanks a lot. Uh, so hello, everybody. It's uh, great uh, to be here today and open the show. Uh, I'm Oleg Demidov. I'm, fo I'm founder of CrowdSpace. And CrowdSpace is a group of entrepreneurs, uh, economists, uh, architects uh, spread across mul uh, multiple locations. Uh, and uh, our vision and mission is to uh, facil facilitate sustainable development on Earth and uh, help to expand human beings in space. And uh, one of the projects that we do is uh, development of sustainable colony on Mars. And uh, it's a quite a challenging task. Uh, that's why we decided to, uh, to hack the process. And we uh, used the time machine uh, to go as far as uh, 2047. And we downloaded the article from uh, Marspedia, uh, the article on uh, New Mir colony on Mars. Uh, and uh, New Mir is the name, name of the colony, uh, which is some kind of reincar reincarnation uh, of the first uh, human outpost uh, out of Earth. And Mir uh, translates as, uh, at the same time, uh, world and, and peace, uh, which means that it's a kind of international cooperation and diversity. And uh, in addition to those basic uh, values, uh, the colony has uh, the, for, uh, the following principles. Uh, safety first, it's the most, the major priority for the colony. Uh, then it's self-supportive uh, with as less import from Earth as possible. Uh, then it's economically sustainable with business model, which is uh, scalable. Uh, it's a lean approach uh, when we build colonies step by step, uh, iterating and improving each time. Then it's equal possibilities and rights for all colonists. Uh, all colonists can get uh, social support from other colonists and from colony administration. And finally, it's social solidarity and openness that is a key aspect of the Martian culture. Uh, taking into account that uh, the safety is first. Uh, we, um, so it's important to, uh, uh, to consider radiation, which is one of the major hurdles to live uh, on surface of the Mars. Uh, because of radiation, the colony location was selected in uh, Valley's Mariners, where radiation level is lower. And uh, the target is to reduce effective radiation for colonists uh, 10 times, uh, comparing to Mars average. And that's why natural shelter or fregolites uh, can help here, because uh, like if we increase the sheltering twice, uh, the level of radiation uh, reduces uh, twice as well. And uh, by this, we can enable very nice um, mode of operations for colonists. It's eight hours sleep in low radiation environment, 12 hours operation in low and medium uh, radiation environment, and then up to four hours work on surface. Uh, so here is uh, the location. Uh, so the uh, Valley's uh, Mariner was selected not only because of radiation, but also because it provides favorable temperature conditions. Uh, it's uh, close to the equator, uh, which gives you better delta V and uh, no need to change inclination. Uh, and at the same time, it uh, has liquid water on the surface and uh, it has like different raw materials to build the colony. Uh, and here is how the colony looks like. So there are three major parts. Uh, the first part are modules that are integrated in the slope. Then there are greenhouses that are integrated with the lowest level of the modules. And finally, we have uh, service infrastructure, including uh, manufacturing, mining, uh, storage, and of course, uh, spaceport. Uh, here is the split of the uh, of uh, almost 30,000, uh, uh, 300,000 square meters. Uh, and you can see that for different modules, depending on the functions, uh, we have different uh, temperature regime, pressure, and radiation. Uh, talking about greenhouses, we uh, plan to have approximately 90,000 uh, square, uh, 90, square meters of greenhouses and uh, it's mostly vegetarian food that is grown there. Uh, 
the basis for the diet is uh, rice, wheat, uh, soy, uh, beans, mushrooms, uh, silkworms, and, uh, and al algae. Uh, additional foods are vegetables and berries, just to make diet more di diversified. And uh, some colony entrepreneurs also uh, provide animal, animal uh, products uh, to that ones who want to have some meat or, or fish. And uh, we grow this food mostly uh, by hydroponics. Uh, the hydroponics is located inside greenhouses. So greenhouses are steel tubes, uh, three meter of di in diameter. And uh, it's almost uh, completely immersed into, into the soil, except for the small slot of 20 centimeters where uh, there is the uh, lens that disperses light inside the greenhouse. Uh, the second part uh, of the greenhouse is arc uh, that uh, have a beconvex lens on top of this. And this beconvex lens uh, concentrates sunlight on this small slot at the top of the, of the tube. And this is how we can increase uh, the, sun, the collection of sunlight uh, during the day. Uh, the limitation is that it doesn't work uh, with the uh, sun elevation lower than 20, 28 degrees. Uh, but anyway, it means that uh, we can collect and concentrate the sunlight uh, in, a, in a matter of nine hours per sol. Uh, and uh, greenhouses are integrated with, uh, with modules inside the slope. Uh, and uh, it allows us to, uh, to optimize boring process, uh, which is even easier on Mars than, uh, than on Earth. And it has bricks as byproduct. Uh, and this whole construction enables to resistance to sandstorms. Uh, it provides natural modularity so that the colony builds in modules. And it's easy to maintain because all modules and greenhouses are connected in one system. Uh, and um, mod there are five modules, uh, uh, 200 people each. And these modules are built in a lean principle. So every module is more comfortable, uh, more adjustable, and uh, more uh, like appropriate for life than the, than the previous model. And uh, for fourth and fifth module, the level of comfort is more or less similar to what uh, people on Earth have uh, for like upper upper middle class. Um, so here is a di diagram on how these modules will evolve, uh, taking into account that uh, shared common shared space will be more transformable and adjustable. Um, so here is how it it looks like, uh, and this is a plan for colon development. So 2050. So the idea is to put the sealed roof on top of the canyon and uh, then uh, put inflatable inside this canyon to make Earth-like conditions inside it. Uh, and uh, inside the roof, uh, the water can be put to reduce radiation level e and uh, provide access to sunlight. And at the same time, there could be uh, some uh, weeds uh, generating uh, uh, generating uh, oxygen that are glowing in, uh, during the night so that colonists will have like very marvelous picture uh, uh, on top of them. And yeah, so how we, so how, how the colony made available all of all these resources. So as uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Zubrin says, uh, uh, the combination of uh, chemistry of uh, 19th century and industrial process of 21st century uh, make it happen. And um, like using regolith, water, and air, uh, plus some ores, we can produce almost any material that we use uh, here on Earth. Um, yeah, these are the major technologies that are available on 2020s, more or less. And uh, those are regolith 3D printing, uh, boring with uh, bricks as byproduct and production of carbon fibers from air. Uh, this is a spreadsheet uh, for the whole uh, production uh, for the 
for the for all uh, production volumes for different uh, resources. Uh, here you can see the production volume, uh, power consumed, uh, production areas that is needed, and the process that we use uh, to to make it happen. Uh, and um, the whole uh, ten year uh, cycle, uh, Martian year. Uh, of the colony is divided into th three major stages. Uh, through all the stages, all the major parameters of colony uh, will grow in proportionally, and at the same time, the share of locally produced resources also grew till uh, 90%, and it meant that uh, the organizational structure should also follow these changes. And uh, this structure evolved from horizontal to matrix and to uh, hierarchical. So on the setup stage, uh, we had board of directors uh, of founders and investors of the project, uh, and they uh, assigned mission leader who managed the whole mission. Uh, and the structure was really horizontal with people who are very, very high skilled and uh, possess very different uh, set of skills. On the early stage, uh, Instead of a uh, mission leader, we have colony administration, and we have 20 uh, specialized thematic teams uh, with team leader for each team uh, that uh, focus on, on different topics. Uh, but still, mission leader can have uh, executive rights in case of uh, emergencies. And finally, uh, at the growth stage, uh, uh, the colony applied uh, to get uh, the status of autonomous territory, and uh, there is a separation between uh, government and operating company. So operating company all owns the assets of the colony, and government basically uh, uh, enable all the government functions. So there is prime minister, uh, its executive uh, function, uh, colony council is uh, legislative, and Supreme Court uh, has uh, uh, jury trial uh, format. Um, yeah, and yeah, basically, this uh, governments uh, collect taxes, uh, custom fees, and they also grant uh, Martian citizenship. Um, so the whole uh, uh, the whole population consists of three major groups: uh, colony staff, uh, people recruited from Earth, and uh, Many of them got loans to get to the Mars and back, and many of them stayed when they returned these loans and become and became researchers and entrepreneurs. So this middle group is the um, is the largest group and most important. They create this internal economy uh, and uh, uh, provide research and stimulate uh, the growth of the colony. And finally, there are temporary visitors who are mostly tourists and uh, artists, and uh, they, uh, buy, uh, uh, they buy packages uh, to go to Mars as tourists. Uh, small package cost $10 million, and uh, the large packages are 20 plus million dollars. Uh, and uh, by 2047, uh, the unique uh, mix of Martian culture, uh, education, and healthcare uh, provided uh, like really a frontier society uh, with a high level of motivation and uh, uh, and uh, e e uh, and achievements uh, and uh, there are for example uh, interesting new sports uh, enabled by low gravity of Mars uh, and uh, uh, broadcast of NBA which is Martian uh, Basketball Association uh, very popular on Earth. Uh, at the same time, healthcare uh, advanced very, uh, very strong, and provided breakthroughs in such uh, uh, in such areas as oncology, uh, genetic modification, uh, and um, autonomous surgery. Uh, science and education are very strong on Mars because most of the people are regional researchers or high-level, uh, high-skilled professionals. Uh, and um, education on Mars uh, is, uh, is, is strong because it cooperates with the best uh, universities on Earth. Uh, 
Yeah, and before this project started, uh, so many people doubted if it, it, if it can be profitable at all and who will be ready to pay a check. Uh, however, using Lean approach, uh, the total budget uh, for the colony in a matter of 10 years uh, fits well uh, to uh, fits well to one year budget of NASA of earlier 2020s. And um, the, the major costs uh, are in general expenses to uh, produce, to develop, produce, and deliver equipment to Mars. Uh, then it's pay payroll, uh, some support services. And what is important is that amount of import of supplies per person uh, reduced uh, uh, two orders of magnitude from the first year to the tenth year because of advanced uh, uh, local production. Uh, uh, establishment of the colony triggered uh, a huge involvement of space community as well as uh, general public aw awareness and uh, talking about media coverage, it could be compared to Olympic Games. Billions of people uh, watched uh, translations on the progress of the mission. And uh, that's why uh, there were a lot of different uh, sources of revenue for this mission, including tourism, uh, tourism, uh, rent and food, uh, advertising, uh, uh, merchandise, uh, and export of different uh, uh, products and uh, technology uh, from Mars. Uh, taxation only started uh, the growth stage uh, because uh, the colony administration wanted to uh, stimulate economic uh, development as fast as possible. And here is the colony PNL. Uh, you can see here that uh, in a matter of uh, first three years, uh, the colony uh, requires approximately $10 billion of revenues. Then it reached break-even by the end of the second stage. And on the growth stage, uh, uh, it's, it uh, becomes profitable. And uh, what is important is that uh, this internal uh, economics that were developed uh, by researchers and entrepreneurs uh, made, made happen this uh, nice economic growth. Um, and so how, how was it funded in the end? Uh, the total amount of uh, investment needed uh, according to PNL uh, was $12 billion. Uh, space agencies decided to cooperate and provide prices to the teams that managed to provide permanent uh, colonies on Mars. And um, a group of entrepreneurs and VCs decided to take this challenge. Uh, and uh, they uh, won the prices uh, first for 10-person uh, colony on Mars, then for 100-person colony on Mars. And this group of uh, entrepreneurs and VCs uh, basically <coughs> returned their investment at the end of the early stage. And at the same time, they managed to uh, start uh, a number of new ventures uh, that appear to be uh, multi-billion uh, space ventures. Uh, and um, the last uh, part of the article is basically uh, Twin Towns and Sister Colonies for New Mir Colony. Uh, and uh, this uh, sign, uh, which is a uh, hologram sign, is uh, set up in front of the colony administration. And all Martians can see how the human beings are progressing in, in the solar system. So basically, I would say that I would love to visit this colony one day, and I hope you also liked it. So let's try to make it happen together. Thank you. Yes, please. Twenty-one billion of required expenditures per year, and then the next chart you said you had fourteen billion of revenue per year. 
which would suggest a deficit of 10 billion per year. But it's then it's not per year. It's uh, for the whole period. Oh, for the whole period. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, but by the end of the 10th year, you are running in the black, even though the 10-year period is uh, a net 10 billion investment. That's what you're saying. Uh, so the investment was uh, 12 billion because uh, we had accumulated losses by the year six, which is almost uh, 12 billion. And then uh, we start making money. So basically 12, million, uh, 12 billion is what is needed to cover all the accumulated uh, losses. Thank you. Yes, please. Um, <clears throat> you uh, you didn't discuss the transportation side of this. Um, I'm assuming you were looking at Starship type vehicles. Yep. So so how many launches you know would you expect per opportunity? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we assume that uh, the cost of bringing one kilogram to to Mars is five hundred uh, dollars, and back to the Earth is two hundred. So that was the input of the contest. Uh, yeah, and and yeah, we didn't. So I don't have the number right now, but it's not difficult to calculate. Um, you assume that all of your investment is equity financing, is that correct? Um, well, basically, yes, most of this is equity financing, and there is parts of uh, prizes granted by uh, space agencies. Okay. Um, you didn't address private property ownership, or if uh, you did, I missed it. Have you addressed that and within the scope of the Outer Space Treaty or, or not? Um, is that development of private property and an option, and if so, can you attach any debt financing? Mm -hmm. um, the, well, it's it's basically yeah, it's it's possible to uh, to use some debt financing uh, if there will be a debt organizations that are ready to to, to provide debts for for this type of venture. Um, yeah, but I, we assume like really a simple model of, of venture financing. Does the model have an inflation rate or uh, an interest rate uh, built in for your, your cost of money? Well, this is basically in uh, dollars uh, of today. So this but this is all nominal and there, there's no assumption for inflation in here? Yes, yes. Yes, or yes. No, there, there is, there no, is no assumption. Greg and others, um, the proposers can propose a political or economic system that they want. It does not have to be in accord with the Outer Space Treaty or other. Uh, okay. So initially you have a venture capital operating model with a board of directors, and then later on you have a, a democracy of, of sorts where the colonists are in charge. How do you buy out the VCs, or how do you make that big transition? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, at the stage when uh, there is there is a government, uh, there is also a operating company that owns assets, and this operating company is basically managed by, uh, by the regional board of directors. Uh, yeah, but of course, there could be different options to, to, buy, to buy it out, and yeah, it could be uh, like different corporations that can buy out. Uh, so uh, we just provided basic framework so of how we can move from this like mission to basically autonomous territory and then of course on this way there could be different like buyouts change of power and, and so on so you uh, picked a site in the Valles Marineris and you called it the new Mars new mirror canyon is that a real place um, and it from your design it looked like you were sort of assuming that was like a slot canyon and that you could use the structure kind of bore into the walls of that. I'm just wondering if there is any such place like that on Mars. Well, I don't I know of one. I should say that uh, the right uh, uh, the right top uh, picture is real. 
So there are these uh, types of uh, canyons uh, on Mars. Uh, the lower picture is not real, not from Mars. Right. I don't think they're that narrow. I mean, what you're talking about is more like a slot canyon. I mean, the, the width of Valles Marineris is, you know, like the size of the state of Utah. It's a very big canyon. Yeah, we, we just need a slope close to the flat. Uh, uh, okay, we need the next group up. Thank you very much for your presentation there. Thank you.